Hello, Stormwater Designers. Welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions instructional videos. We're in part three of the EPA Swim uh, tutorial here, and we're continuing to go through the tutorial. We're picking up where we left off, where we had built out the sample model here. So that was this previous page. Now we're moving on to here, and we're going to hope to build out the rest of this project in this tutorial. So um, we're just going to start back here from the tutorial. As visual objects are added to our project, Swim assigns them a default set of properties. To change the value of a specific property for an object, we must select the object into the property editor shown below. So there are several different ways to do this. If the editor is already visible, then you can simply click on the object or select it from the project browser. If the editor is not visible, then you can make it appear by one of the following actions, double clicking the object on the map, right clicking the object and selecting properties or select the object from the project browser. Okay, so. If we want to edit this junction by double clicking, there we go. There's the property box here. So let's see maybe what uh, edits they want us to make. The two key properties of our subcatchments that need to be set are the rain gauge that supplies rainfall data to the subcatchment and the node of drainage system that receives runoff from the subcatchment. Since all of our subcatchments utilize the same rain gauge, gauge one, we can use a shortcut method to set the property for all subcatchments at once. So from the main menu, select edit, uh, select all. Then select edit group edit. Okay, edit group edit here. Select subcatchments as the class of object uh, to edit, and then rain gauge as the property to edit. So rain gauge here, and typing gauge one as the new value. Looks like we've got a gauge one. Click OK to change the rain gauge of all subcatchments to gauge 1. There we go. And then a confirmation dialog will appear knowing that three subcatchments have changed. They did. Select No when continue to editing. OK, well, I'm just going to exit out now. Then to set the outlet node of our subcatchments, we have to proceed one by one since these vary by subcatchment. Double click on subcatchment S1. Um, or select it from the project browser. Okay, so we got the property editor. Type J1 in the outlet field and press enter. Let's go J1. Press enter. There we go. Note how a dotted line is drawn between the subcatchment and the node. Excellent. And then now we need to do S2 to J2. and then S3 to J3. So here's S3. Nice, we've got those set up. Finally, we wish to represent area S3 as being less developed in, in than the others. Select S3 into the property editor and set its percent imperviousness to 25%. So that means that there's gonna be less developed land in this one. There we go. Okay, we got that set up. The junction is an outfall of our drainage system need to have invert elevations assigned to them. As we did with the subcatchment, select each junction individually into the property editor and set its invert elevation to the value shown in the table below. Okay, so for node J1, its invert is going to be 96. For J2, it's going to be 90, which makes sense. It goes in descending order here. Excellent, and then J3 is 93. J4 is 88. Good, and out one is 85. Excellent. Only one of the conduits in our example system has a non-default property value. This is conduit C4, the outlet pipe, whose diameter should be one and a half feet instead of one. Okay, so we're gonna select the conduit here, starting to get the hang of it. So it says that the diameter should be 1.5 as opposed to one. Let's see if I can find the diameter here. That, mu that must be max depth. So let's go 1.5 and change that one. Okay, in order to provide a source of rainfall input to our project, we need to set the rain gauge properties. We're going to select gauge one into the property editor and set the following properties. Okay, so let's select the rain gauge. 
We're going to go with rain format intensity, rain interval one minute, good. The data source time series, and then series name TS1. Okay, so we need to change the series name. We're going to type in here TS1. Excellent. As mentioned earlier, we want to simulate the response of our study area to a 3 inch, 6 hour design storm. A time series named TS1 will contain the hourly, lane, uh, hourly rainfall intensities that make up the storm. Thus, we need to create a time series object and populate it with da data. To do this from the browser, we're going to select time series. Okay, so from the project browser, select time series category. Okay, let's see if I can find it. Time series, here we go. We're going to add one. Click the plus button which brings up the editor form, enter in TS1. Enter the following values in, into the time and values column of the data entry, okay. Enter these in for time and value. Let's see if it's gonna let me copy, maybe it won't let me copy and paste it, let's see. Okay, not quite correctly. Let me try that again. TS1. We got time zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the values of zero, point five, one, point seven five, point five, point two five, and zero. You can click the view button and the dialog to see a graph of the time series. So there's a graph of it, triangular shape and then click the OK button to accept the new time series. OK, so we have a time series now. Having completed the initial design of our example project, it is a good idea to give it a title and save our work to a file at this point. OK, so it's just asking us to save. I already have saved this project. I'm going to save it again. The project data is saved to the file in a readable text format. You can view what the file looks like by selecting Project Details from the main menu. To open our project at some later time, we would select the Open command from the File menu. Okay, now we're going to get into running the kinematic wave analysis. So thank you for watching this video. We have the hydrology terms guide down below, which you can get for 100% free. It contains three or four pages of hydrology terms that are commonly used in the industry, as well as our free WWHM 2012 courses. So you can check those out. So in the next lesson, we'll get into running this project here. So we'll see you guys next time.